Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to review biomarker guided antibiotic stewardship in suspected ventilator associated pneumonia, VAP rapid 2 trial, a randomized control trial and a process evaluation. Published in Lancet Respiratory Medicine in December 2019. Ventilator associated pneumonia is a common infection acquired in intensive care units. However, the diagnosis of this infection remains extremely difficult. Pulmonary infection is typically confirmed in only 20 to 60 percent of the cases. So, the current authors of this particular study did this study way back in 2010. In this, they established the diagnostic importance of pulmonary interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 8 in ventilator associated pneumonia. Then, they did a study five years later and established the diagnostic accuracy of these two markers for exclusion of ventilator associated pneumonia. So in this particular study they hypothesized whether measurement of bronchoalveolar lavage fluid interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 8 would improve antibiotic stewardship without compromising patient safety in suspected ventilator associated pneumonias. This study was a multicentric randomized trial conducted across England, Scotland and Ireland in 24 ICUs from the 17 NHS hospital trusts. The inclusion criteria were the patient had to be admitted on weekdays, aged more than 18 years or older, intubated and on mechanical ventilation for at least 48 hours and having a suspicion of ventilator associated pneumonia. Now how did they suspect ventilator associated pneumonia? A new or worsening chest radiograph or CT with alveolar changes plus any two of the following body temperature less than 35 degrees centigrade or greater than 38 degrees centigrade, WBC count of less than 4 or greater than 11 or purulent tracheal secretions. The clinician had to consider eligible patients unlikely to have extrapulmonary infection requiring antibiotic treatment. The exclusion criteria. The patients were excluded if they fulfilled the criteria predicting poor tolerance of bronchoscopy and bronchoalveolar lavage. PO2 less than 60 on FR2 more than 0.7, PEEP of greater than 15, a peak airway pressure greater than 35, heart rate of more than 140 per minute, mean arterial pressure less than 65, blood bleeding diathesis, platelet count less than 20 or INR more than 3. ICP which was greater than 20 millimeters of mercury or if the ICU consultant considered bronchiolevelar lavage to be unsafe for the patients were excluded from the trial. The randomization was done on one is to one basis and it was a double blind trial until the test reports were informed to the treating team. The randomization was done on www.sealedenvelopes.com. You can check this website. Patients were enrolled and then randomized. The clinical opinion on pretest probability of VAP was noted from the clinician. Then a protocolized bronchoscopy and bronchioalveolar lavage was arranged for all randomly assigned patients using 120 ml of lavage with 0.9% saline. These samples were then transported at 4 degrees centigrade to one of the six testing labs with a transport time of up to 1.5 hours. In those labs, uh, interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 8 levels in the bronchiovelar fluid were measured in cytometric bead array using accuracy 6 flow cytometers. The concentration in the bronchiolar lavage were entered into a pre-derived equation and based on an equation, the lab got a report as to patient had or didn't have VAP. These reports were immediately informed over telephone to the treating team on the presence or absence of the VAP. The decision to stop the antibiotics was on the treating clinician. VAP was confirmed by growth of a potentially pathogenic organism of at least 10 to the power 4 colony forming units per ml of bronchioalveolar lavage fluid. 
education and training was done pre-intervention and every six months on the tests and trial interventions in the enrolled centers. The primary outcome was antibiotic free days in the seven days following bronchoalveolar lavage. Antibiotic free days were handled as an integer with patient classified in one of the eight categories, zero to seven antibiotic free days were inclusive. So coming to the secondary outcomes, there were antibiotic free days on day 14 and 28, antibiotic days of 7, 14 and 28, ventilator free days at 28 days, 28 day mortality and ICU mortality, SOFA score at day 3, 7 and 14, antibiotic associated infection that is Clostridium difficile and MRSA up to hospital discharge death of 56 days, antibiotic resistant pathogens cultured in the hospital discharge or death. Healthcare resource was calculated with the length of stay in the critical care unit or hospital until discharge death or 56 days. Now coming to the sample size calculation. The median antibiotic free days was expected to range from 0 to 1.5. On based on that, they estimated to recruit 90 patients in each group with an alpha error of 0 0.05 and beta of 0.2 allowing attrition of 14.3% the target sample size was 210 patients so 360 patients were screened 214 were recruited and ultimately 210 were randomized now coming to the results high suspicion of VAP which was noted from the clinicians prior to the intervention was 57% in the intervention group and 45% in the routine group, which was significantly higher. The confirmed case of VAP was also significantly higher in the intervention group, which was 37% in the intervention and 30 in the routine group. So coming to the primary outcome, antibiotic free days was same in both the groups, that is six. Now coming to other findings, biomarker assay had a very good negative predictive value of 0 0.09. Only one case of false negative was reported. The most commonly isolated pathogen was in the bronchiolar lavage fluid was Staph aureus. Now coming to the limitations of this trial. 22 unsuccessful assays were done in the intervention group, which shows that the test for the biomarker is not yet completely perfected. Bronchiolar lavage is not a gold standard or an established practice for the diagnosis of ventilator associated in pneumonia. The definition of using colony count of 10 to the power 4 as a confirmed case of VAP is also not clinically established and it may not be optimal in all the cases. Not all organisms which are grown in the culture are actually the causative organisms of the VAP. So there is always a controversy as to common cells which are growing in the culture, but some different organism is actually causing the ventilator associated pneumonia. Uh, the clinician had the final say to stop the antibiotics. Uh, the biomarker was assessed at only the single point and not serially. And there is always an uncertainty as to the optimal time point when this particular biomarker should be analyzed. So why did we not see any benefit even though the test had a very good negative predictive value, which means that if the test finds a particular patient not having VAP, that means it is very, very high likelihood that the patient actually doesn't have a VAP. So if we look uh, deeper into the results 17 patients in the intervention group were reported to be negative of VAP which means that it is this 17 patients uh, intervention in this particular group would have resulted in some change in the antibiotic practice but only four cases the antibiotics were ultimately stopped which means that 13 cases the recommendations were not followed by the treating clinicians now, the answer to this lies in the process evaluation which was done in this trial.
in this process evaluation they found that some units had less recruitment which was primarily due to they didn't use bronchiolar lavage as a very routine practice for diagnosis of vap the culture for de-escalation of antibiotic was not well established in these units these units usually gave antibiotics for a fixed duration of time they did not have this culture for de-escalating antibiotics based on reports the units that did not have a trial champion or a research nurse had very less recruitment and less, less adherence to accepting the result findings uh, trial champions are those people who were part of this trial and who were present in those respective units the presence of these trial champions and research nurses influenced the trial in a better way resulting in better recruitment less exclusion more motivation to do a bronchoalveolar lavage and more motivation to follow the advice of the laboratory results now coming to the conclusion antibiotic use remains high in patients with suspected ventilator associated pneumonia antibiotic stewardship was not improved by a rapid highly sensitive rule out test in this we successfully proved that the test has a very good negative predictive value yet in only four patients the antibiotic could be deescalated so if we do the intervention in just four patients out of 200 it is very difficult to find a positive result the prescribing culture rather than the poor test performance was the real reason why we did not find a positive finding in this trial thank you for your patience and check our website for further details <laughs>